And I'm your favorite magic channel, favorite magic channel. Best believe that the professor go bananas for my deck text. I come correct like a porn star slicing up all these other suckers with my sword mark. What's up, my wizards? Deb from SBMTG, the place down there with the decks. We've got a few decks for you today, but they're all the same kind of deck. It's weird. We're doing something different today, is all I'm saying. Today, I'm going to bring you the first video in a, something I hope to be a series a little bit later on here. This is how to build, you know. Instead of just giving you a deck, I'm going to sort of give you the tools, you know. You teach a man to fish, that old philosophy, and um, sort of tell you how malleable that strategy is, sort of the core philosophy of the deck, what, you know, sort of important cards that it plays, and then the different ways you can tweak and tool around with it. So, hope you guys like this. I've been working on it for a while because right now, there's so many different ways to build this deck right now. And what are we working on? Well, something that's really generating a lot of buzz right now, the Aristocrats. What is Aristocrats? Well, it's a deck that's been around for a few years now, ever since Cartel Aristocrat and Falcon Wrath Aristocrat were in the format together, you know. We had Blood Artists back in those days. It was a really fun and really, really important deck. Some recursion elements because we're sacrificing creatures, you know, and whenever we sacrifice creatures, we do stuff. You know, we can swing in with Cartel Aristocrat or make sure that she avoids any removal. With Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, we're able to make sure that she survived almost damn near anything. So that's sort of the original core concept of the deck. Let's sacrifice dudes and make our other guys better, then we can have recursion aspects to bring our guys back. So, how do we update that for the current format? Well, we got a blood artist of our very own in Battle for Zendikar, Zulaport Cutthroat. He is sort of the card for the deck. Now, the two core cards, sort of the shell of the deck, is definitely going to be Zulaport Cutthroat and then Tuco Hus. The whole deck, more or less, works off of the interaction between these two cards. You know, whenever we sacrifice a guy and Tuco Hus, not only does it get bigger, we get incremental advantage in the form of drain, you know? Awesome, awesome thing. And traditionally, historically, has been abusable. And that's there's absolutely no difference this time around. Another card we're working around is Hangerback Walker. Hangerback Walker, he, he's in 90% of Aristocrats decks. He's not an auto-include, but he might as well be. Obviously, the, the synergy between this and Nantuko Husk is fantastic, and if you're sacrificing all the flyers that you get, just Zulaport Cutthroat starts to get pretty insane pretty quick, and Hangerback is already an established card. We know to play this in the shell. We're secondary in this deck. Um, we've got sort of two tiers to our secondary. These are cards that sacrifice well and are very utility, and we can play them um, early on in the mana curve. We've got a few of those that are important for the deck. And we've also got some other cards that really push the deck. You know, just in insane synergy with what the deck does, and we almost certainly have to play them. So, on that first string, sort of the things that um, we can play in the one and two drop slot that really help us get going and sacrifice very well a little bit in the mid game, you know, are going to be Soltai Emissary, Carrier Thrall, and Blister pod in um, decks that want to play green, which is definitely the easiest color to add to the deck. You know, you add green, you get more than one really good option. Blister pod is a great one drop in just the black green shell, you know. The, the card is very, very flexible, and the other two are the exact same way. We need two drops in the deck. We can play Den Protector in that green shell. That helps get things back in the graveyard after we sacrifice and get a little extra mileage out of them. That's really important, too. But Sultai Emissary and Carrier Thrall are sort of the two that you'll see very, very often, especially Emissary. He appears to be particularly strong, although for my taste I like Carrier Thrall a little bit more. I like getting a creature that you can just choose to sacrifice, even if you don't have a husk. That's always nice. Now, the things that help the deck along, you know, they don't, they're not necessarily things that sacrifice well, but the things that help the deck along are Catacomb Sifter, Liliana, Heretical Healer, and the other one, and then Bloodsoaked Champion I'll put in this category too, you know. Bloodsoaked Champion, one of the other really, really, really good one-drops that a deck like this can play, you know. Um, worth noting, by the way, that you can, you know, use that ability as many times as you have mana for, as long as you've attacked, you know. You can attack and then bring him back into play during your second main phase, sacrifice him if you you still got two mana, bring him back into play again, sacrifice him, you know. So he's he's really good at sort of um, inevitability, you know. Very, very exploitable he is. Sifter is super obvious. You add green to the deck, you're almost certainly playing Catacomb Sifter. Just scrying one is, is better than you might think. That's, that's insane. Um, really setting up your next draw almost no matter what. Um, and Grim Hara Specs, for that matter, I'll go ahead and put her on this list too. You know, I, I, I'm tempted to put Grim Hara Specs in the third string, but her ability is just so 
ridiculously bomb for a deck like this, you know, and really helps fuel, you know, sacrificing a creature might just draw us another creature that we can drop, sacrifice, draw, you know, so things get out of hand really quick with Sifter and Grim Horror Specs out especially, you know, fix your draw and then draw it, trigger, you stack the triggers that way. So that, both these cards work really, really well on this end of the curve. And then Liliana, Liliana, man, um, a lot of Aristocrats decks will play a full play set of Liliana, because it doesn't matter if you sack Liliana, you know, she comes, <laughs> she comes into play... And very often, another thing about this, very often you'll flip her and immediately kill her with her Neg X ability, you know. So she'll go to the graveyard and feel free to play another one, whatever. So, you know, there's there's plenty of things you can do with your, your Liliana. You can send her to the graveyard really easy and play another one pretty easy, too. So just, yeah, four full copies of Liliana, a lot of these decks, and I, I can't blame anybody for that. In our third string, still talking black here, we're going to play um, Bone Splinters and Merciless Executioner in a lot of these decks, you know. Maybe a one or two of Executioner, and I've seen some decks play a full four of Bone Splinters. And it's another sacrifice outlet, you know. It's, it's always good to have parity with, um, you know, Nantico Husk, if that's the only sacrifice outlet you've got. Some of these decks will also play Vampiric Rites, but usually just as a one of. I've seen that a couple of times, but mostly you're relying on Nantico Husk. But if you're going to sacrifice a dude anyway, and you don't care about sacrificing him, Bone Splinters is, a, is very, very good. It's basically like Murderous Cut, and in this deck, has an upside in some cases. So, yeah, Bone Splinters is pretty freaking amazing. Also in this third string here is Rock Shambler. You do not see this very often, you know. Um, the deck has enough two drops to play. Again, Carrier Thrall and Soul Titan Missary are premium two drops. And if the deck adds a color like green, you usually play Den Protector over Rock Shambler. You know, again, I like Rock Shambler, but if we're playing so many two drops, we can't fill out the curve with them because we have to play a lot of three drops, too, for playing Antico Us, Luliana, and all Grim Horseback, Catacomb Scepter. So we really, we, we really have to make sure that we're playing the most efficient cards at all three mana costs, or Game. Two cards I want to talk about here that go in some build of the deck. This is no longer the third string. This is just sort of cards that some people play in some aristocrats' builds that may make them entirely different decks, you know. In, in this case, Collected Company and Rally the Ancestors are two cards I want to talk about. Collected Company, people are deciding that it's not as important as they once thought it was in this deck. Still a very important card. But, you know, you used to see four ofs at the beginning of this format. Now you see two and three ofs of Collected Company in a lot of these decks, you know. Still a very important card, but we really don't want to hit Hangerback Walker off of it. That's a prime concern. But still an important card, can still do some cool things at instant speed for you. And same thing with Rally the Ancestors, man, although I think this is even more important in a lot of ways, you know, depending on what build we're utilizing. But Rally the Ancestors can bring all your dudes back into play at one time, and in a lot of cases, like, you'll bring two Zulaport Cutthroats back from the graveyard, again, Tuco Husk, and a couple of other small creatures, you know. And then you can just win. You can just, you know, deal 12 damage all at one time if you do it right, and it's not hard to do right, to be honest with you. A deck that people are talking about is Blue Black, Demir, Aristocrats, you know. Sometimes it plays a white card, so it's called Respercrats, you know, which is a dumb name, but Espercrats, I'll, I'll call it that. We'll often play, but not always, Sidisi's Faithful, an obviously good card for a deck like this. Um, we'll often play uh, a Jutai's Command, that's the only thing that makes it Esper, honestly. And we'll almost always play Whirler Rogue in this deck as well. These are sort of the three blue cards that make blue-black um, exploit, or blue-black aristocrats, an actual thing. So many options with a card like Whirler Rogue, that's really good. And same thing with the Jutai's Command, puts us back in the game in some situations, we'll almost always get an important creature back, usually Zulaport Cutthroat, but not always, you know, we just get a utility thing back, that works too. There's also a case for um, Elf Aristocrats, Elf, Elvish Aristocrats deck, um, it plays, you know, Rally the Ancestors, it's sort of an Abzan Rally deck that plays Elves, you know, it plays Rally the Ancestors, plays Shaman of the Pack, and then a few key Elves at the bottom, you usually, um, Elvish Visionary is an important card for the deck, and very often Leaf Gilder to help us get up to that mana cost we need to for Rally quicker, you know. Um, but we'll also play Zulaport Cutthroat in the deck, and then Tuco Husks. So, you know, it's really cool when we can just, you know, play a couple of dude of Elves early in the game, and then Shaman of the Pack, and then we'll play Zulaport Cutthroat and Tuco Husk on the fifth turn, and get a bunch of damage in the next turn, usually fifth or sixth turn, if we've got, you know, Leaf Gilder out to help us pump mana. Fifth or sixth turn, we'll play Rally, and put all those dudes back into play. Shaman of the Pack does damage, we can sacrifice and the, you know, the, the husk again, get damage off of Zulaport Cutthroat, you know. So just the deck does a lot of damage on key turns, and it is, it is really, really an interesting deck. I like Elvish Aristocrats a lot. 
There's also the ally aristocrats deck, which can also be Abzan, but it's usually Mardu. Mardu aristocrats is fine because we get to play an important card in Butcher of the Horde. Butcher of the Horde is just great for this deck. We still want to play Nantuko Husk, obviously, but usually we cut back a copy or two of Husk so that we can play a copy or two or, or a copy or two of Butcher of the Horde. Just if we're already sacrificing creatures, we might as well get the maximum effect for it, and Butcher of the Horde is freaking nuts for this deck, you know? Um, but, aside from that, let's actually talk about the allies. We get to play Calastria Healer in the allies Mardu deck, and the Calastria Healer combos with Zulaport Cutthroat very well, you know, get the damage coming in and going out. That's really, really good, and when we can rally in a bunch of Calastria Healers all at once with a bunch of other creatures, you know, then things get silly quick, you know? If you can just rally in two Calastria Healers and two or three other creatures, you get a bunch of damage right there. Mardu allies is no joke, and you could play March from the Tomb in the deck, although for now, I think I like Rally a little bit better. Well, that's sort of um, the base of what Aristocrats can do. You know, I've given you the shell, I've given you a lot of the important cards in a bunch of different colors that we can play. So, here's a couple of decks. First of all, here's Mono Black Aristocrats as I see it right now. Now, the shell is already heavily Mono Black, so might, we might as well play Mono Black. And I know that it's not an incredibly budget deck between Liliana and Hangerback Walker, but still, not as expensive as a lot of decks we can play. Now, obviously, I haven't included a sideboard or lands here. That's, you know, in the interest of time, for the most part. This deck, I've played a few games with, and it's really, it functions very, very well, because it's just got all the key things that we need for the deck, you know? This, this is fine right here. On the opposite end of the spectrum, this is Rainbow aristocrats, five color aristocrats. In this deck, we get a chance to play Butcher of the Horde and Nantuko Hus together. That's always good. We could just do that in Mardu aristocrats, but we also get to play a Jutai's command in this deck, which you've already established is really good. Now, I'm not including Jace in this build, although I could see Jace in the deck. You know, we've got Rally the Ancestors, Collected Company, a Jutai's Command, Bone Splinters, all things that we'd like to play out of our graveyard, and it'd be nice in the early game to be able to draw some cards, you know, and put stuff in our graveyard so that we can rally it back in later. Those are all good ideas, but I haven't included Jace in this build. I've opted for Den Protector instead, and maybe a couple Sadisis Faithful and Blister Pod at the very low end, because we still need low end creatures, you know. It looks un underwhelming to have those two guys there at the bottom end, but if we don't have anything that's worthy of sacrificing, the deck falls flat. You know, if you got a bunch of dudes out that you don't want to get rid of, then you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, so you need small creatures, and instead of Blister Pod or Sadisis Faithful, I can see playing maybe Soltai Emissary in this slot, although we we have got, we've got a lot of creatures that we want um, to come into play as themselves, you know? <laughs> we want their into the battlefield abilities, so Sulta Emissary isn't great in that position. But Carrier Thrall could still work, you know? But we need some utility creatures like that at the low end of the spectrum. But in this build, don't, don't take it super seriously unless you want to shuffle it up and let me know how you feel about it. But this is mostly just to show you how many options the deck actually has. That's all I've got for now. That's a, that's a lot of stuff to talk about, though. You know, you can play Mono Black Aristocrats, Golgari Green Black Aristocrats, Blue Black Aristocrats, Mardu Aristocrats, Rainbow Aristocrats, Esper Aristocrats. And that's it. Again, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please help us out. Like, share, comment, subscribe. We're less than 100 subscribers away from 10,000 subscribers. I'm Dev from SBMTG. As always, thanks for watching, boys.